Albinism is a hereditary genetic condition that causes a lack of pigment in the hair, skin, and eyes. In Taiwan, about 2,000 people live with this condition. Two of them are Ling Yuxuan and Li Xinghui. Together, they are the only albino couple in the country. A few years ago, the two of them decided to start a family, triggering a storm of public controversy. Some said the two were being selfish, forcing another generation to live with their genetic condition. But others supported the couple's decision, saying it was nobody's business. Today in our Sunday special report, we check in on the couple who show us what life is like with their expanded family. It's five in the afternoon, and Taichung is still stuffy with heat. Lin Yuxuan and her firstborn walk in front, followed by father Li Xinghui. They're headed out together to pick up their other son from preschool. Lin and Li are the only albino couple in Taiwan and both their sons have albinism, too. The lack of melanin in their skin means they can't spend too long in the sun. The condition also means they have vision problems, which make daily life a little bit more difficult for the family, including the children. I can read this because he writes it all very big. But for documents like this, texts that use a font size 8, I have to use a magnifying glass. Nowadays, I take a picture with my phone and zoom in. She told me her kid sits in the front row in class. I asked her whether he was able to see the blackboard and she said no. I asked, so what does the teacher do? She says they write it on a small white board for him. Often, people with albinism can have visual acuity as low as 2100 or 2200. It's also common for them to face bullying at school. For example, if I touch someone's desk, they might say, watch out, your desk is diseased now. Starting eighth grade, I started touching their desk often on purpose. I was so mad. It was before middle school. They would make fun of my white hair, and they'd ask me if it was the same color as down there. Lee is the only one with albinism among three siblings. His hometown is in a rural and conservative part of Miaoli. He had a rough childhood here 30 years ago. People said I had hooked up with a foreigner. My mother-in-law said she didn't want the child. I told her that if I, his mother, don't want him, who else is going to love him and care for him? I hugged him and cried. Nobody wanted him. Whenever he got sick or anything, I was the one to do it all. There are about 6,000 genetic disorders that humans can be born with, but not all of them can be found through tests. For example, diabetes and high blood pressure are hereditary, but can you test for them before birth? No. Currently, our instruments and technology have no way to predict skin color, hair color, or eye color. There's no way to do that. Lee's mother wanted to save her child from further torment. But in the end, her son married a woman with albinism, and they had two albino children together. I said, if you get married, so be it, but don't have children. They said, okay. I told them how difficult it would be. I said, raising a child is really very tough, and especially when both of you are like this, it'll only be harder. If both parents have albinism and it's the same type, their children, no matter if male or female, will all have albinism too. That's the laws of hereditary because it's a recessive genetic disease.
About 2,000 people in Taiwan have albinism. The condition makes them stand out in society, and many experience rejection in dating and marriage. But Lee and Lin found each other and decided to move forward together. After marriage and knowing full well the consequences of albinism on daily life, they decided to fulfill their dream of having a child despite their family's reservations. In 2015, they had their first child, and one year later, they had their second. Both boys were born with albinism. We had the means, so why not? My wife said that this way they can keep each other company. I said, okay. I didn't think about it much more. Some might say that we are selfish, like how could we want to go for a second child after having one like that? I thought, it's fine, this is our life and we are the ones living it. Say, once I'm old, after I'm gone, if my older son has nobody else, I would think, how can I put this? If, at that time, he has nobody to help him, at the very least, he would have a brother or a sister to help him. Besides the vision problems and the lack of melanin, there's little else that's different between people with or without albinism. Like many other parents, Lee has arranged extracurricular activities for his children, such as piano lessons. Academically, it's tougher for them than for regular people. That's without a doubt. But I think that you just have to accept that reality and then get used to it. There is always a way. Many people don't know what albinism is, so they might have a lot of questions about it. Over the past two years, I've been running a YouTube channel. I want to show everyone this is albinism. Lee works at a musical instrument shop where he sells guitars and repairs musical instruments. That salary, plus a 5,000 NT subsidy for the visually impaired, provides enough money to raise his family. A few years back, when Lee and Lin began forming a family of their own, they triggered a storm of internet commentary that has not stopped to this day. Some internet users called them reckless for deciding to have children. Others offered words of encouragement. One physician had this to say. Perhaps many people wonder why they want to have children. There's one thing that I hope can people understand. And that's not just about albinism. In our society, people love being backseat drivers. I think that's awful. Who are we to decide who gets the right to have children? I find that appalling. We shouldn't go and encourage them, but we also shouldn't tell them not to do it or try to prevent them from doing it. That's our spirit. While building their family, Lee and Lynn were subject to much discrimination due to their genetic condition. Today, thanks to advanced technology, couples can assess their genetic risk factors before they try to conceive. Through genetic testing, you can rule out whether the parents carry certain genetic diseases, such as amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, thalassemia, and other severe recessive diseases. Even if the parents are healthy, they can get a specimen taken for testing. Albinism is passed on in an autosomal recessive inheritance pattern. That means that both parents have to carry the mutated gene for the disorder to manifest in the child. Even people with black hair and melanin in their skin might carry the gene. The only way to know for sure is carrier screening. After conception, the fetus itself can be screened for albinism. 
这个病人。If the testing requires a large amount of genetic material, the only way to know is after the mother gets pregnant. Then, 11 weeks in, they can come for a checkup to see if the fetus is healthy or not. Today, couples who want children have access to more genetic screening options than ever before. But the big question is, are they obligated to use it for family planning? People who study hereditary care about one thing called non-directive genetic counselling. This is very important. That is to say, we can help the patients make a decision however they like. You can have your own opinion, but you can't tell others to have that opinion, especially when it comes to hereditary diseases. The late afternoon sun shines down on the family. Two kids and two adults, unlike anyone else on the street. For this albino couple, Raising a family has been a life-changing undertaking that they face with courage and with joy.